What's up guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. In this one we're gonna give this red work van some much needed love. It may not look like it but this car has actually not been cleaned for over a year and it's never gotten a proper detail in its entire life. So without further ado let's get right to it. First thing I like to do is to pre-soak the lower sections of the car with the tar remover. And then I covered the entire car with a strong pre-cleaner that I've mixed in my foam gun right there. I always get a couple of comments about whether you should rinse from the top down or from the bottom up. For me personally, when it comes to the pre-rinse specifically, I always like to begin from the bottom up. There's a couple of reasons behind that, uh, one of them being that you can clearly see where you've rinsed and where you've not rinsed. And also, uh, the pre-cleaners don't get diluted from uh, the water just running down by gravity. That way you can start to rinse pretty much immediately if you've applied the pre-cleaners from the bottom up as well, so you save a little bit of time there. With that being said, it's just a matter of personal preference. I've tried both, both works, so do whatever you think is best. But when it comes to the contact wash, then yes, obviously you should start from the top and work your way down to the bottom. The time has come for the contact wash and I'm choosing a strong natural car shampoo since I'm gonna polish the car anyways afterwards. I'm actually using a separate wash mitt for the lowest sections of the car because they are usually much dirtier than the rest of the car, especially on this one. So to avoid cross contamination and scratching up the rest of the paintwork, that's a really good idea. This car is actually pretty small considering it's a box van, so no ladder needed to access the roof. Some of these tar spots were really stubborn and did not get removed with the first application of the tar remover. So my favorite method of removing these is actually to soak a microfiber towel with the tar remover and then gently wiping them off. This in my opinion is a much less aggressive method than to solely rely on a clay bar. Speaking of claying, that's exactly what I did next with the help of a clay mitt. And it was so satisfying just seeing how the paint went from feeling like sandpaper to smooth as silk. So this is how the car looks right now, pretty okay, pretty decent when you look at it like this, but if you come up close, especially with an inspection light, you can definitely tell that the paint is hazed and a little bit oxidized. So I'm just gonna do a quick one step polish, that's all I have time for for this video and this detail, and then just some quick uh, paint protection over that. Um, 
But before I go ahead and do that, let me just take care of uh, some of the paint chips as we can see right here before I go ahead and polish the car. Unfortunately, the hood um, has some clear coat damage as we can see right here. So I'm actually not going to polish that because there's some uh, clear coat damage on some other places as well. If I go ahead and polish it, chances are very high that I'll just rip up more of that clear coat. So really, this hood needs a complete respray. So I'm just not gonna polish that. It's not worth it. So it is what it is, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, quickly polish out all of the big areas that are most noticeable anyways. So uh, yeah, let's get right to it. An alternative method on removing tar spots other than a tar remover and a clay bar is to actually polish it out by hand. Definitely requires a bit more elbow grease, but it is doable. I really like Mancerna's 3-in-1 polish. It's a good compromise between cutting power, finishing abilities, and it also leaves behind somewhat of a paint protection, so it's perfect for today's detailing mission. And as we can see, it did absolute wonders when it comes to this red paint as a one-step polish. Not 100% perfect show car finish, but definitely a major improvement comparing to how it looked before. Then it's just rinse and repeat on the entire car. We can see that I didn't use any masking tape on the plastic trim, partly because time was against me on this detail, but also if you're using a good quality polishing compound, it doesn't do that much harm if you accidentally get it on some plastic trim. You can just, most of the times, easily wipe it away. Someone thought it seemed like a good idea to scrape off the ice from the headlights with an ice scraper during the winter. Consequently, the factory UV protection on the headlights got removed and the headlights has gotten a bit dull. So I decided to give them a quick polish as well. To prevent them fading in the nearest future, I applied a proper ceramic coating to the headlights. To get rid of any lingering polishing compound and dust laying around on the paintwork, I went over the entire car with this ceramic spray sealant. Uh, this will also ensure that uh, the paint is protected for about three months in the future, and it also provides the paintwork with a good gloss and depth. I treated all of the black plastic trim with some CarPro Pearl diluted 50-50 with water. I think that gives it that perfect black plastic uh, trim look, really makes it look like new from the factory. So here is how she looks as it is right now. The exterior is done. M pretty major improvement uh, if you compare it to before. It looked pretty dull in the paintwork. I think the shine went up pretty good just with a one step. And I absolutely love CarPro Pearl. It really makes these black plastic trims pop out and provide a good contrast. Um, so uh, yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and continue with the interior.
The floor mats are actually made out of plastic, so no fabric floor mats in this car, which out of a detailing perspective is really convenient. So just simply spray on your favorite APC, agitate with uh, a suitable brush and then just wipe it off with a damp microfiber cloth. Apparently someone had spilled some paint on the passenger seat. Uh, I did my best to remove it with the various cleaning agents, starting from mild to aggressive. Unfortunately, the only thing that seemed to work was paint thinner, which is really aggressive, uh, but I eventually got most of it out and made it look uh, less eye-catching at least. And with that being taken care of, we're finally done, and here is how it looked afterwards. Really happy with the transformation, it felt super nice to give this work van some much deserved love. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time we see each other, have a really good one.